Hello and welcome to our webinar. I'm Andrew of Zebra BI and today I'll show you all the new features that we have developed over the last two to three months. There's so much new. Um, we have product updates almost every week. So we have weekly updates. There's so much new stuff that even our team internally has a problem of following up on all the features as we develop them. So we decided um, to do a special webinar this time. Uh, for the first time in our history, we'll do a double webinar. So actually tomorrow I will be uh, doing a webinar on Excel because we do have two products. We have Zebra BI visuals for, for Power BI and we have the Zebra BI add-in for Excel. So <clears throat> tomorrow I'll be talking about Excel Today, I'll present all the new features in Power BI. Um, my agenda for today, very simple. Um, I will start with a short overview, what, what's new. I'll try to you know, pinpoint the most important features, um, provide a quick overview, then we'll dive into details. I'll try to present you know, how to make use of all those new product features uh, in practice, how to use them in real life, reports, dashboards, mobile apps, uh, how they can help you um, create better reports, dashboards, and so on. Um, I try to present as, as many uh, examples as possible, and uh, all those examples will collect and will also share with everybody um, uh, with the uh, PBIX file, so there will be a download available after um, after the webinar. Um, after this point, um, I will try to reveal a few things. You know what's next, uh, because of course we plan to continue developing. Um, you know, new new versions, new features. Uh, we've got many users so <laughs> with more users we've got more requests for new things and uh of course we gladly accept all the um you know all the recommendations or uh, ideas and uh, our backlog is full of new ideas so i'll try to um, disclose a few things that are in our backlog uh, for the recent future uh, I will share all the uh, resources. I'll um, uh, explain all the download links and, and where, the, where the things are, examples, recordings, and you know the, the free trials and, and so on, and the Q&A. So that's my agenda for today. Uh, in case you're wondering, yes, we will send you the recording. We are doing the recording, so um, it's, I guess it will be available in tomorrow, day after tomorrow. All right. So, Zebra BI visuals for Power BI, what's new? A lot, <laughs> a lot. All right, I'll start with new chart layouts and new settings. Uh, I guess most of you are um, familiar with our chart slider where you can simply change the chart type uh, on one click by simply sliding, sliding the visual. Uh, so these are the main chart types, but then also internally, have several layouts for you know different types of charts for for example especially the uh, column chart actually has eight layouts and we have added uh, a few new ones uh, in the last month and two months so now there are eight layouts uh, that are you know suitable for different situations so i'll try to explain that there are new settings um you know for controlling the design um of charts and and, and so on so we'll, we'll dive into that um, second one, legends, data labels, um, axis labels, all right? So this is quite important because, um, you know, um, labels can actually make or break your, your, your reports. Um, you need uh, to have complete control over uh, the number formatting, uh, you know, what will you do with long texts? Uh, this is always a problem in data visualization. So, for example, <clears throat> one of the recent features we've added is is that to, to control exactly how the axis labels are uh, presented. If they are long, do they get uh, truncated? Uh, do they get rotated? Um, and so on. We've added the legends to all charts that you can, um, you know, display or just hide. 
and they are uh, responsive. They they adapt to actual values in the chart, so it's uh, quite exciting, I think. Um, next thing is the grant totals. Uh, many people have lots of challenges in, especially in, in Power BI. Uh, you know, if you're presenting, for example, um, a monthly development, uh, then many times you would also like to include you know the, the total result like the year to date value versus plan or uh, just the full year value and so on and also in uh, like in hierarchical tables where you have a you know a structure report with vertical axes um, you do want to you know display uh, the grills at the bottom perhaps like you would normally do in a pivot table or something right so that's all possible now in <clears throat> in zebra bi visuals so i'll try to present a few cases from this um also a new thing is um our visuals are highly interactive so uh the end user can you know interact with the visual can uh, you know break the axis or not can slide between charts can sort the data so there are many features available for the end users uh which is really nice and and fine but sometimes you just need to have control over exactly you know which interactions do you want to allow to your end users in certain scenarios you just want to have you know um uh, um, reports that uh, the user cannot mess uh, the layout uh, um, with and, and so on. So now there's a completely new group of settings and you can control the uh, elements uh, completely. Um, report page tooltips. Um, I guess this was one of the favorite uh, features we have added. So I just, I have shown this before uh, in a month ago. Uh, but I'll just do it once again and pr provide maybe some 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 other ideas how you can make use of this this really nice nice feature where you can add additional information when the user hovers with his mouse over certain values in in a chart, right? So um, uh, quite quite interesting feature that you know can enhance the readability mm -hmm. and usability of of your reports if you use it in a you know in a proper proper way. Um, all right, multiple comparisons. Um, multiple comparisons in all Zebra BI visuals, you can actually add multiple scenarios. So you will get, for example, comparison of actual versus plan and actual versus previous year and the forecast. Um, and now <clears throat> you can actually do it simultaneously in the same visual. So you can have a uh, visual that will present uh, the growth rates from the previous year or, you know, the variance versus previous year and the variance versus plan. They will all be scaled so you'll understand, you know, what is the relation of, of actual actual value like sales or cost or something, you know, to previous year and to, to plan at the same time. Um, yeah, which is one of the basic um, uh, I would say requirements in uh, many uh, business reports, especially finance, sales, um, sales reports, uh, and so on. The biggest one, <laughs> I'm really happy that I am able to show this today, is the drill down uh, into rows with expand collapse. All right, this this works really, really nicely. I'm so happy I can I can show this today. So just bear with me. Uh, this is really good. Really good. It's um, we needed to actually redesign our visual uh, quite um, thoroughly um, because you can actually now expand and collapse rows. You can go, you know, into a lot of details, into several levels of hierarchy in your data, which means that you have a lot of data in the visual. So we needed to optimize the whole rendering engine and and so on. So you can actually drill down into thousands of rows, and it works really nice. Mm -hmm. Multi-dimensional small multiples. Um, small, the small multiples are somehow our trademark, I would say. And the um, it's not just that we have, you know, the normal small small multiples, you know, like a matrix with with charts uh, equ with equidistant rows and so on. Our default small multiples uh, have we call them smart rows, um, and <clears throat> we do have additional algorithms. Um, multiples which can handle large differences in values uh, with still the proper scaling 
And one of the latest additions uh, to, to those algorithms was also the uh, multi-dimensional small multiples where you can add one dimension in columns and the other dimension in rows. So you get a sort of a, a sort of a matrix uh, which is optimized based on you know the values in, in, in charts. And uh, yeah, in this way you can sort of build uh, a bit more complex uh, reports as well. It works quite quite nicely. Uh, and if time permits, also I'll try to show a few other things like um, uh, percentage measures, percentage points, right? Uh, you do have measures, not just, you know, the, the currencies like dollars and euros and then and, and the quantities and so on. In your normal reports and dashboards, you're using lots of, uh, lots of percentage KPIs, right? And it's a special challenge right because if you you know have percentages then uh, the difference in percentages is a percentage point and it's kind of a little you know a, a small uh, a small challenge that typically bi tools don't really solve well uh, but the zebra bi visuals um, yeah have this support for percentage values so hopefully the time permits me to show uh, a few examples of that. All right, let's dive into Power BI. All right, so, okay, here we are. Um, first, the chart layouts and the settings. Um, all right, so this is the Zebra BI visual. And just re let me just delete this and build this from the start so i'll add our first visual i'll throw in some sales data all right so i have some sales and i'll compare this to my goal and i'll split this by month so let the month all right I got the waterfall chart. So this is our, our chart slider, right? So you can you can slide through, you know, between different types of charts from column charts to, to um, line charts and so on. Now, uh, first of all, of course, the visuals are completely responsive. So if you have very limited space, the chart is small. If you make it bigger like this, you know, Zebra BI will calculate additional additional values, uh, like for for example here, this is the relative relative um, variance. Okay, if you make it even more big, even bigger, right? You get your sales here uh, behind it. It's the you know it's the plan. All right, if it's the plan, I'll actually move this field from the previous year to plan. All right, this is the you know the, the basic functionality of, of Zebra BI. Uh, it's a recommendation of the IBCS standard, so the, uh, the International Business Communication Standards, to render um, you know different business scenarios in certain ways. Uh, so of course we do that. So now I have my actual behind. It's my plan. So I'm actually my actual in January. It's you know smaller than. Uh, the plan that's why i have a negative variance here this is the absolute variance and this is uh, actually 21.4 uh, percent all right so this is this is the basic functionality our chart works like this but we do have additional layouts so uh only the default is always you know responsive which means uh the zebra bi visual will try to present the data in most meaningful way uh based on you know, the, the values in charts, the categories in charts, and on the space available. However, you can switch between different layouts, all right? And this is, this is, um, this is uh, a few layouts here are new. We, we have been adding those layouts, you know, for the last past month, uh, different ones. So you can just go for a simple, uh, you can just go for the uh, integrated variance chart. So you will always have just this, this chart, whatever, whatever you do and but you can uh actually change it and you say all right maybe i just need i just need the variance i just need you know the difference between actual and plan i'm 
in the variance. All right, so this is the absolute variance. Or you can just calculate the relative variance in percentages and just, just use this little chart somewhere in, you know, in your dashboard or on your, on your report. Okay, so this is the second one. So you'll find you'll find actually eight different types of, of, of layouts here. So this is now the relative variance and the absolute variance. Uh, next, uh, we do have the actual. So th this is the actual and you know the plan behind it and only the absolute variance. All right. So without you know those lollipop charts, um, some people prefer to display relative values, right? So this is now the comparison to plan with the relative with percentages. All right, so so you can do this. Uh, and this is now, you know, whatever you will always have this, this layout, you have fixed this layout and uh, this works in this way. In some cases, you just need, you know, the base values, you just want to simply present the actual and the plan and that's it, right? So you have complete control over chart layouts here. Okay, so um, a few more settings that affect um, this the the uh, you know the the design of this chart. Uh, first of all, um, here you see this this setting called the overlapped. Mm -hmm. Here you can um, here you can actually turn on or off the um, comparison scenario. So I can show the plan that is behind the actuals or just hide it and you know this will result in a cleaner cleaner visualization right but many people just want to see everything right so that by, by default this overlapped column is always shown at at uh, you know uh, behind all right this is this um next uh, the um grant totals all right, this is actually the next feature. You can simply enable the grand totals, which will, you know, uh, result in the calculation here, additional calculation. So first of all, I see the total here, uh, 22.1 million and the total plan. So this would be now from January to August, right? It's probably some kind of a, some kind of a, um, yeah, uh, year to date, year to date value actually here. All right, um, this is the grand total. Next, um, turn, sorry, on or off. Uh, next, um, huh, let me just check. I think a few things are actually missing here. This, and just check something. I've been doing a few tests, so this is okay. Let me just go back. Just not sure that, do I have the latest? Do I actually have the, the latest version here or not? Let me just quickly import. This is how you, uh, incidentally, this is how you import the visuals. All right, so just, just make sure, make absolutely sure that I have this. So we have two, two visuals. Let me do this. Save it, all right? When you update the visuals, just first save your report and then refresh your page, all right? So I've just pressed F5 to refresh my. Okay, so hopefully this will work now. Um, okay. Um, all right. Um, so these were the, so the first settings. Uh, next. Um, Next, the uh, legends. All right, this is uh, new. Um, this was introduced uh, two months ago. Uh, all charts now have the legends. You see those delta PL, uh, delta plan. So this is the difference to plan, the actuals, and so on. And these legends are shown in all charts. Like you see here, this is the actual line. This is the plan uh, behind it. Right, so all the charts have the legends. Also here you have the legends, right? Okay, so these legends, first of all, you can rename them, all right? If you're wondering about, you know, the, these, these AC, PL and so on, this is, this is the, just the default. Uh, this is just the default, it's the recommendation of the IBCS standard, you know, just to use short abbreviations. Uh, so this might work in, in, in most cases, but if it's not, you can completely 
experience, right? You can just say, all right, my reference is a plan and my absolute variance is delta plan, or you just say, you know, plan minus, actual minus plan and so on, right? Just try to keep it short. Uh, but the point is here, you can rename all the legend entries, right? Uh, or you can simply turn the legend on and off. All right, so this is the, the legend part here. What else? Uh, the design. Uh, in the design section, of course, here you can, you know, change the colors and everything, but this is new here. This little setting called Lighten when overlapped actually um, controls the exact display of the comparison scenario. So, for example, here you see um, by default, this is now turned on, which means that those comparison scenarios that are my actuals are uh, a little bit lighter, right? So by default, uh, it's like this. So they are more, you know, strong and so on. So there's always the same color of the reference scenario. But sometimes, you know, this um, can get a little bit cluttered. For example, especially if, when you're using forecasts, because the recommendation of the IBCS standard is to use the hatched pattern for forecast, right? And this kind of gets, you know, a little bit cluttered, especially, you know, if you have strong colors and, and, and so on. Um, right. So in any case, this is a little bit too much, maybe. So that's why we have introduced this. This uh, Also, you see the labels, right? Because the labels are, you know, rendered on top of this hatch pattern. Uh, there's a there's actually um, the background, a white background behind the label. So these are little details now, uh, which you can completely control. So labels, you do have the option for the background. So label background transparency, right? So if you would put this to 100, which means 100% transparent, there's no label background, but this does not work on, on dark columns, right? So that's why you can just, uh, you know, put it to something like 20% or something and have the labels. Or alternatively, you can use this new setting called lighten when overlapped, which means that, you know, this reference scenario is lighter and now you can, uh, yeah, it's kind of more uh, more visually visually appealing and easier to to read and and so on. Especially if you're using comparison to, uh, for example, to previous year. Um, oh, sorry, um, I actually wanted to show you the comparison to previous year, right? Which is much lighter. So now you don't really need any kind of uh, label background. That's why in this scenario, the label background is simply it's it's never rendered rendered. All right, so these are the legends, um, the label uh, label settings, and so on. Um, even more important is the number formatting. Okay, so by default, um, Power BI charts and visuals always display those uh, thousand uh, indicators like, you know, the, the, the K and M for million, K for thousands and, and then B for billions and so on in the, uh, in the data labels themselves. So you see you have K, 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 M, 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 M right? Uh, so this is the default. This is how most of the visuals in Power BI work. However, in our visuals, you have complete control how you display the, the, you know, the numbers. First of all, here uh, you have the choice how to display the units. All right, this is the automatic option, which is the default. But you can say, all right, I just want to report in thousands, right? Uh, so now I have my thousands here. Next, if you choose like thousands or millions, like this you can then uh, uh, then next decide where to show the unit. Do you still want to show it in, you know, in the data label? Because it does not really make sense. There's a lot of uh, redundancy here. There's this M character in every number. It doesn't make sense. So in this case, just switch to title. So now the unit will, is shown in the title, right? So now I have everything, the sales in million, and now I only have the you know, numbers here, all right? You can also do it in thousands and you can display, you know, control completely the decimal places here, decimal places. Uh, you have a separate setting for 
that's so this is you know like like in this chart here so you can have one decimal place for percentages and you know just thousands without any decimal places uh, in your base charts and base values all right so these these are the um, units um, next thing um, maybe the last thing uh, are the um, axis labels uh, so there's there's a there are a few new things here um, so we are those were the grand totals uh, legends labels I think I have as an example here oh yeah exactly so for example this chart this chart here if you do something like you know if you do something like this so you put uh, if you tend to put your you know products or customers or you know uh, a dimension that is actually not a time and you really want this in a chart with a horizontal axis you always have a problem with those long you know labels right so now uh in that's why in zebra bi you will find under the categories under the category settings a few you know a few options and this one is the newest one uh you can actually choose what happens when your labels are long all right by default the labels we will get long labels will get trimmed so for example when you make a chart smaller you see that this text automatically automatically gets truncated and the uh, you know the cut the part of this cut is replaced by the the, the ellipsis sign so the, the three dots so which is kind of a standard text abbreviation method here right but of course if you have a really small chart then you know nothing else is is visible here so that's why if you really want to do this you can also um, switch here to rotate right and now uh now this will kind of work automatically so if there's enough space the labels are horizontal which is the ideal case which is something that you should strive for always have all the labels horizontally presented but you know if it really if you really want needs to do this then uh you know just switch to rotate and then the you know then it works like this so you see it's completely adaptive uh, completely responsive it works you know in real time and after a while it will just lock into a vertical position but it's still you know optimized so for example the pl uh the pl label here and the actual label here because there is enough space they do not get rotated so only the things that need to get rotated are rotated otherwise uh, other things are not all right only now right when it's extremely they get rotated all right and this works with all the charts right so you can have a chart like this you can have a line chart but you see this is bad practice this is bad practice do not use line charts line charts for categories for product categories something it does not make any sense right you will always solve this in a much better way if you simply switch from from this horizontal charts with horizontal axes to a chart with a vertical axis you see this works much better and you don't have any problem uh, with the, you know rotating the labels and so on so this is much better try to do this first and if you really need to then you know just um, that you know and <laughs> there's this option to to rotate also all right um the next new thing is uh the interaction all right so our visuals have lots of interaction options okay um right first of all this chart slider this is one thing next thing you can break the axis in waterfall charts like with with a, with a simple click all right even the end user so if you're a designer you can do this right but even once you share this to your end users and you can have you know thousands of, of end users who will consume those reports they they will be able to do this in reading mode uh even on the um even actually on the mobile report all right if you design a mobile report and open it in the power bi mobile app this is all possible right including the, the axis break and and so on right um but many times you simply do not want the end users uh, to do certain things, right? Um, 
uh, for example, here you can switch. Like if you have a, if you have the integrated chart. So let me zoom in. Oh no, this is actually better. So I just zoom in. So for example, here, if you just go with your mouse and click on the labels, you see you can choose between. You know, this is the absolute label. This is the relative uh, relative label. So the relative variance in percent or even both, right? So these are the interactive features. Uh, now, if you do not want users to do this, uh, you will find a whole group of settings here, somewhere in the middle, called the interaction, which actually means interaction in the reading mode. Okay, so this does not affect the design mode. While you're designing, you can do everything, but uh, you can um, affect the interaction mode. So, for example, if I disable the slider, the end user will not be able to do this. Now I can do still do this because right now I'm still in the design mode. I'm still designing my report. But if you switch, if you now switch to reading view, I'll save this report. All right, now, me, now I'm in the reading view. Oh, what happened here? I hope my connection can handle all the all right uh, so now I'm in the reading view you see there's no there's no chart chart slider anymore which means the end user cannot change the chart it's this chart the column chart and that's it all right so you can uh, do this for all other interactive features so you'll find lots of settings here so the chart slider uh, change variance calculation means you know clicking clicking on those uh, labels here then in the um, Waterfall chart, you have this axis break. You can disable uh, everything like this or just disable the whole thing here on the on the group uh, on the group settings. So again, let me save this, go to reading view, uh, refresh this. All right, and now I'm the end user. You see, it's everything is completely fixed. Of course, the Filtering still works. So, for example, if the end user will click on March value here, they will get the filtered result for March in you know other visuals. This is the default Power BI. This you know um, we do not block this, right? It's it's the core functionality, right? So, for example, if the user will click on this chain um, on on this store or you know in just one product, of course, this visual still gets filtered, even though all other interaction was uh, turned off. All right. So this is this is how you can all the um, interactive features. All right. Let me check where we are. Um, maybe it's time that I move to our favorite new feature, which is the expand collapse. OK. So first of all, let me simplify this visual. All right, I'll, I'll just start from, uh, I'll just delete this and start from, from scratch. So uh, this feature is available in our second visual. All right, so so this, the first visual is called Zebra BI Power Charts. The second one is called Zebra BI Power Tables. All right, and this one has this, this nice feature now. Um, I'll just add my sales, compare this to my goal, and I'll split this by, let's say by, product all right i get a nice comparison so here you have you know all the sort options uh, this is my uh, comparison to previous year actually again this is comparison to plan or you can sort by the relative variance and so on so this this is the default functionality now if you add another dimension so let me find something meaningful the store all right store chain for example now you have several options. First of all, if, if you simply just click on the store chain, it will get added to the group place holder here, uh, which will render two groups of charts. Instead of one group, I have two groups of charts. But what is more interesting is you can now, you can actually add this to the category field. This uh, results in a hierarchical table. This is something that we had before, and we had this hard limitation of only so only two levels of uh, you know first two levels in in your category field were actually rendered. 
but now there are new things. First of all, there's this expand collapse, and much more importantly, you can now add an unlimited number of fields in the category field, which is um, which is kind of scary actually, uh, it, and it works incre incredibly well. So, what do we have here? Some uh, district, for, perhaps. So now I have the chain. So the store chain, these are some retail stores, all right. Uh, and then, then there's the district here. So see, even on, on the right click, so on the right click, you do have the collapse. You can just collapse everything. So this is now my first, um, you know, uh, chain, the store chain or two brands or something. This is the district. Within the district, I have the product, all right. Um, so you see, sometimes those, uh, sometimes the labels get abbreviated, uh, which is, you know, which depends on the space that you have. So, oh, no, actually, all in this case, um, it depends on your settings for the category, right? So by default, um, the, you know, the amount of space assigned for those tags is automatic. So kind of, you know, uh, our algorithm tries to see if there are some huge texts or not and then decides what to do you can actually switch to full which means that you will always have full texts right so if your data is nice um, you know if your database is nice and you don't have very long labels and outliers and, and, and so on um, you can safely switch to full um, and now you will always you know Everything will be calculated exactly as needed based on the length of, of the text. Um, so this is this is one field here. Uh, the second one is new. So this was just last week. So now we also have the row height concept, which means, like for example, if I close everything, the height the height of this this row here for the fashions district is you know. Uh, let's say 30 pixels or something. It actually depends on the font size. So if you um, increase the font size, also this height will increase. But um, um, and then you know when you expand things and you have more rows, you see they get kind of condensed and the row height is lower. All right, up to a certain point, you know where this minimum row height is reached. So this is one option. The other option is, this is now new. <laughs> you have lots of options here. First of all, you can you can have completely font sized um, rows, which means that um, the row height is calculated from the font size. You can control the font size here in the data labels. So if I increase the text, the font size, you see everything kind of uh, recalculates and the rows also get bigger exactly for the font. All right, so if I put this back, let's say to 12. So this is the font size. Uh, then there is a little bit more relaxed, uh, relaxed option, which is the font size times 1.1. So like 10% more or even a little bit more, you know, like this. And now all the rows, no matter how many rows there are, you will always have a fixed row height based on your font size. All right, so these are these are new options and this now works really, really nice. So um, these were three um, three fields in, in my category field. So let's uh, let's just uh, let's just test it and uh, hope it works. So now I've added the city. All right, there are lots of lots of cities, and then I'll put the category. You see, I'm switching switching fields. I put category product category below the, the city, and it's extremely responsive. So it's really fast. Even if you make the table smaller, you know this uh, trademark feature of Zebra BI visuals. Uh, they're responsive. You see that the, the columns change. And it's still responsive, even though I have lots of uh, lots of data already here. I have four levels in my uh, in my hierarchy, right? And you can just you can just expand all, like expand entire fields for the districts, expand all cities, products. All right. And now this is uh, rendering quite quite nicely. So, for example. Just Close, close, open. 
it's really fast. So we have actually we we needed to change completely the rendering uh, machine so that you know um, this works in 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 a proper way. So yeah, this is the biggest one. This is the biggest one. Uh, hope you like it. Um, all right, uh, multi-dimensional small multiples. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Um, this was introduced uh, at the end of the summer. Um, all right, first of all, the small multiples. All right, I'll just throw everything out. And now we have a simple chart here. Okay, it has a broken axis. So I have one big chart here, all right? The small multiples means that, you know, you have one chart and now you add uh, a dimension like you want to split this by product category all right i'm adding the product and i get the so-called small multiple. it's as easy as, as this all right and this is now like a classic a little bit uh, more advanced small multiple um so you have all the products uh aligned into rows and columns right but it's actually just one dimension just the products just the products and they are just rearranged uh you know rearranged in this in this matrix uh, as needed based on you know on the width of your of your um, you know based on the space if you don't have space like uh in a mobile app right you you will have narrow columns so you just do something like this and then users will scroll down and just see all the products uh Right, and they will understand that you know the, the the first one, like the men's clothes, for example, in this retail, you know, in this shop here, uh, you know, uh, the sales of that is four million, and you know, the shoes are are, are less, and you know, the and, uh, uh, you know, other clothes are are even other categories are even less, and so on. So you can understand where's the problem, and so on. So these are the small multiples. The uh, next thing is sometimes. Um, like maybe I have an example here. All right. So so this is the same thing, only I have another visual here. So now you can have a situation where you have one really big value. So and now I'll control click. So when you control and click, you you know, this is a standard Power BI functionality. But as you see, our small multiples here get filtered. And they are always displayed in this in this matrix here. All right. Now sometimes you have certain values like you have a situation like this where one chart is much bigger than you know others. All right. So in this case, you might want to click here and uh, take a look at the settings under small multiples. Under small multiples, you'll find a few more you know settings. So this is actually an old one. It's called the automatic layout, right? So, so this was the default is just rows, always everything, all the charts in rows. The second one is automatic, which means that if some values are really big, this chart will get displayed over two rows, right? Or sometimes even uh, across multiple multiple rows. Uh, then we have some other algorithms like the largest first, which is which is nice when you have a, sometimes nice if you have original order. Um, well, this is now the same. All right. Okay. So sometimes, you know, just play around a little bit with those with those options. Okay. These are these are still one-dimensional small multiples, right? So three different algorithms for one-dimensional. But um, now sometimes you want to do something else, and you want to add another dimension. Like I have my product categories here. I'll just put this to descending, the sort order to descending now. And now I will add another dimension into, into the visual. So let's do something simple like the chain again, the store chain. And I will add it in my group field. You see, in my group field, the group field controls the small multiples. And what happened now is now I have the different store chains in my columns. So you see the fashions district here and the, the this linces is here, fashion district is here. And now in my rows, I have all my products. All right. So this is this is now the typical 
matrix, uh, you know, one dimension is in the columns and the other one is in rows. And now the, the spacing for the rows is always calculated so that, you know, uh, it's kind of optimized. If there's a bigger chart in one row, you know, the, the, the whole row will take more space, uh, but everything else is still properly scaled. So whatever you're observing, you're always getting the right comparisons. All right. Um, okay, perfect. Um, the tool tips, the, the, the page tool tips is that something that you uh, probably um, already know. Um, let me just um, try to find one example. So I've shown this example before, uh, the income statement. Okay, well, this is loading. Uh, while this is loading, if you have any questions while I'm doing this, you know, just type them into the questions box and then uh, we'll switch to questions in a few minutes. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll have a read of your, all of your questions. Just go ahead and, and type away your questions. So this is the tooltip. All right, uh, the, 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 this is the, the, the tooltip um, and it's actually called the report, um, report page tooltip. Okay, so if we go back, the standard tooltip in Power BI, if you just, you know, leave your mouse, uh, you know, over one value, you will get, you know, the standard tooltip, just have all the values are written in the tooltip, right? This is the default one. If you don't do anything, you'll get this, but you can change this. You can change this completely and you can design your own tooltip, which is a standard Power BI. Um, that uh, was also introduced to custom visuals. So that's why we supported also this. So for example, you can do things like, you know, I have my PNL statement here, you see, and now when the user <coughs> hovers with his mouse, this is now product revenue and you get the details. So now you can put the details, you know, uh, on the tooltip while the user is adding, um, yeah, just, browsing browsing the data right so this is the uh, service revenue this is the total revenue and you can you can make it you can make it smart right so you can actually change the content based on the type of so for example these are some costs here right that's why um that's why for example this chart here is gray right you can completely change the design for certain rows and things like that right you can do certain magic with that so this is the tooltip uh you will find uh this um, you'll find this setting here at the bottom, right? Um, this is the same setting that all other Power BI visuals, even default visuals have. So it's completely the same. So under the tooltip, you can um, put it on off. So now I don't have it anymore, you see? So you need to turn it on. It's actually on by default. And then here you actually uh, specify the type of this tooltip. Um, if you don't do anything, you will have this default value here. But if you do have a tooltip page designed, then you just switch to this report page. And now you choose exactly which page needs to be uh, shown here. And of course, before you do this, you need to design your own separate page, own separate page. And on this page, um, you need to, um, well, first you need to name it, but this is important. Here you have this switch on your page information in Power BI. You need to turn this tooltip on. This is default standard Power BI. And now this, this whole page is actually a tooltip, right? And this tooltip is now displayed on this visual because first I have enabled it. And second, I, I chose exactly this, this page called the tooltip. All right, so this is how it works. Um, I find uh, uh, a few things here. No, I've messed something up. Mm, yeah, so basically a um, couple of ideas. If you have a structure report, a simple report for one month here, you can uh, add month, you know, like the development of the values in the tooltip or vice versa. Sometimes you have a chart with, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, development over time, and then 
uh, variances, and then then in the tooltip you actually um, display the split of this variance um, across another dimension, right? Which is nice if you have a um, monthly development, actual versus budget by country. Um, it will show you some, you know, variance uh, in December, say December, and then in the tooltip, uh, when you go over this, you know, large red part in December, uh, it will show you the split of this variance uh, across different products, for example, um, or something like that. Okay, so this was supported um, somewhere uh, this, this month. And the last thing uh, I'll show today are the multiple comparisons. Um, so, for example, here I have now the comparison to plan by some product. So this is by plan, um, just comparison to plan. Um, it's like this. So this is my plan. Make it a little bit bigger. And now what I'll do is... So I have my values and my, I have my plan. But if you also, uh, you know, take the previous year and you add the previous year to the visual, now this visual has the actual values, it has the plan, it knows the previous year values, all three scenarios. And what it does is, it, first of all, you get this little, uh, you know, you get, this is my actual. Then I have, in the back, I have my plan. And this little triangle here marks the position of the previous year values. Okay, so you can kind of, kind of see these here. Um, let's drop the tooltip. You see. So this is my this is my actual here Here's the plan. So I'm, uh, you know, better than than the uh, plan. But this was also the previous year, right? So this is and now what you also get is you have the difference to previous year growth to previous year. This is this is this difference here. But you also have the difference to plan, which is the, the big one, right? Uh, so you get both charts here at the same time. And again, this is completely responsive. If you make it even bigger, this can get a little bit complex, um, maybe even too much in some cases. But you do have all the options here. You know, you can display this in, in different with different types of charts. Even here, you can switch to the waterfall chart. So something like this is sometimes nice if you want to you know, kind of explain how, you know, different products actually affect the total, the total uh, growth to plan, the total uh, variance to plan, which is, which is here, the total, you see. Again, this is the total. This is the total in parts. You have exactly the same option here, the, the grand total. You can just switch it on or off, you see. This works quite, quite nicely. And if you put another dimension, now I have only products and the total. But you can mix it up now. You can add the, um, what else, the channels? Do we have some nice channels here? Um, I'll add this to categories. So first I have the channel. All right, you see now I have the retail, the retail part of my business by product here. It's, yeah, above the plan. But the wholesale part of my uh, of my business, unfortunately, is below the plan you see here. So this is, you know, you see, if you add more things, then you you gain knowledge. You gain knowledge, right? So so we see that the problem here, the total is below the plan, mostly because in the wholesale there's a problem with exactly dairy, frozen foods, fruit and veggies, and so on. Now, if you had a nice here, you could actually display display even more detail, like you know, uh, the exact products or SKUs. Uh, you know, in the dairy category or something like that. Okay, again, you see two comparisons. Previous year, actual plan. This is the variance to plan. Uh, this is the variance to previous year. This is the variance to plan. So these are multiple comparisons and you can do this by, by month as well. So for example, you can add the forecast. Oh, sorry, not there, here. You can add the forecast. Mm. Maybe now oh, this is the forecast should go here. All right. So now I see the forecast until the end of the year, and all of that is compared to my plan. But you can even drop in the previous year, so you can have up to four comparisons. This one results in a. To me, this is already too much, but 
be something like um, something like this. And then if you play around with the chart layouts that I have shown in the beginning, uh, you know, maybe you can find something like maybe just actual and absolute. And you see, this is yeah, perhaps better. I'll just focus on 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 this one. Or right, so now you have the the uh, variance to plan, variance to to to, to previous year, variance to plan. You have your actual, you have your plan, and you have the previous year values, and you have your totals. You have your totals that you can uh, you know turn on and off. Um, and this this little arrow here is called the difference highlight. Uh, which you can also turn on and off. Okay, right. <laughs> this was a quick run through uh, through most important options. Um, yeah, uh, this was um, it was um, um, you know you got something new out of this, and I hope that all these features will help you uh, create even better reports. Um, now, if you have any questions, please type them in your in in the questions box. And then we'll wait uh, a minute. Um, while we are waiting, I will just show you a few resources. Um, first of all, all the webinars that we do are um, stored, are recorded, and we have 17 hours of, of recorded material already um, on our web page, right? This is number one. Number two, we have all the download links. We have the PBIX files and short videos and, and so on. So I just want to make sure that you uh, know where all the, the, the resources are. So this is our web page, zebrabi.com. Uh, this is the default page. So you, you'll see here there's a little <laughs> that's available for Power BI. Um, so if you click here, you will get into um, the part of the website uh, which is dedicated to Power BI. Uh, first of all, if you haven't tried the visuals, uh, first of all, of course, you have uh, uh, you can just opt in for the the free trial. There's a 30-day free trial version. Just um, you know, type your email, and the download links will be sent to this email that you've specified. Um, you will find the help section here. If you click on the help button first of all you will find uh you know some pbix examples with lots of sales versus budget reports income statements uh, ibcs report templates and other stuff uh, there are videos follow along guides tips and tricks and so on webinar recordings at the moment we have three web webinar recordings for power bi um and so this one is the first for the for the power bi but if we get back to our home page uh, all of our recordings um, you will find here under resources. So if you go to zebrabi.com under resources, under webinars, okay, here you'll find all you know <laughs> all of the webinar recordings recordings we've done so far. Um, all right. I hope this was useful. Let's switch to your, your questions. Um, any ideas if we can if we can get set actions? I'm afraid I'm not uh... all right. Um, okay, some people would would love to see uh, would love to see <laughs> are asking about the, the and DAX and quick measures. Uh, I do plan to um, I do plan to prepare an, a separate webinar for for DAX, like you know the the essential DAX for um, for uh, for dashboarding, business dashboarding. So I'll do that and I'll, I'll cover also the, the the quick measures. So it's just, just not the topic of, of this particular webinar. Can we have actual previous year plan and forecast comparison at the same time? Okay, hopefully I I, I uh, have shown this. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, will you try to implement drill through function to Zebra BI? Uh, yes, the drill through is number one on our list, and we've been waiting for that um, for you know a long time. And just a few days ago, I've got a definite confirmation from Microsoft that the drill through is coming to custom visuals. Uh, up until now, this was not possible. No custom visuals could could use the drill 
now it's confirmed it's coming out uh there will be a new version of the custom visuals api version 2.2 which will support this so as soon as this is out we'll switch to this api and we'll support the the drill through function so it's coming out it's coming out uh it should be there in december um, but then uh, it will probably also take one update of your power bi desktop right it will be it will work in service but then you know the new uh, power bi desktop update also needs to come out to support this so december uh december should uh, you should see that the drill through um is there a way to display the currency symbol in the values oh that's interesting um we haven't had that we haven't had that question before um the first of all the um the way how the numbers are presented is also um it it also depends a little bit on how you format your measures right uh first of all how you format your measures and the second second um second thing is um all the number formats are localized are localized so i'm not sure actually out of the top of my head i'm not sure uh what happens with the currency symbol so let me just check this and then i'll um i'll just write write an email um I, i'll i'll answer you via email right at this top of my head i'm not not sure uh what what happens so first of all just try if your measure you know that your measure if you go under modeling in in in, in power bi here you see you have different formats and so on so i could check just quickly what happens i'm not i i don't believe that the currency is um displayed here um i i, I not recommend that because you'll just get this currency symbol in all the charts so i think it's much better to put it in the title and you can um completely uh, customers the, the 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 title text here right so i would just put this here like in in euros or something like that so i definitely recommend doing something like that um and i'll check what what's uh, you know how to get the currency symbol in the numbers not sure if it's possible or not at the moment all right um exports to powerpoint um yeah uh, good question uh, the export for powerpoint i uh, this is still this is again this is similar to to drill through uh, drill through is coming out in december but uh, for the powerpoint i still don't know so it's again it's not completely in our power we are talking to microsoft uh there are several scenarios how uh, the export to powerpoint could be uh, supported um for zebra bi visuals uh and for other custom visuals unfortunately at the moment uh this is not working but it's it's definitely on on top of our list it's right next to the drill through so these are these are the two most uh frequently asked for uh features so i hope something will happen and i guess i will have some some new information in december um but I don't really expect that, you know, it will be delivered in, in, in December. I, I don't think so. But um, hopefully, hopefully um, Q1 next year or something. And I'll keep you posted on this one. Um, how about pricing? If, if you have any kind of pricing information, please just refer to, um, just send us some, some email to, to info at Zebra BI. Our guys will help you. There is uh, the, the, bas the, the basic price list is the basic price for our visuals is um it depends actually on the number of of users so all the users in the company uh so if you have 20 users then the price is seven euros per user per month uh and and so on there are different options depending you know on whether you're a small company and, and then it's eight euros this is top uh, top price eight euros it's it's the most and then uh if you have lots of users then the, the price goes goes down like you know so it, it really depends on, on the number of users um buttons yeah buttons work uh you can add buttons in your power bi desktop right so this is um well it also depends which version of the power bi desktop you have uh, right um uh, i have just reverted back to 
August update of, of this um, uh, Power BI desktop. But if you will add buttons, uh, yeah, they work similarly, you know, like, 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 it's almost the same thing. So the buttons, the buttons will work if you, if you add a button and assign an action, um, it normally interacts. Um, all right, a couple more questions. Multi-currency support. Uh, if you, can you can you explain that? So the question is um, uh, actually the wish is we are interested in multi-currency support. Uh, not sure that this is something that is actually um, is that uh, is that something that the visual should handle or not? I'm not sure. Oh, cu currency coming from the database. So you actually want to display the currency symbol in the data labels? Yes, all right. Okay, then I'll check that. I'll check that. Uh, I, I see your email, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll check and I'll, I'll, I'll get it. But in any case, I would, I would prefer to do it uh, here in the title. I don't recommend adding, um, repeating the same um, characters, you know, in all the numbers because it gets cluttered. Um, all right. Um, sort by column with the name, for example, the name of product. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and just uh, download the latest version. So the question was about sorting. Um, so you see here, here the thing is uh, sorting, right? Uh, you can sort by any column on the visual, right? So this is something additional that, that Zebra BI visual uh, will, you know, um, helps you with. So you can sort by the variance, by, by the actual, you can sort by the plan, by any column you add to the to the visual, right? It's it's one of the yeah uh, nicest features, I guess, BI visual. However, you can turn the sorting off. So there's always the same, the same pattern. Um, so this is, um, this is actually this would be typically the the default so everything is sorted by the actual all right then you click once more everything is sorted by the actual descending all right the third click the th third click here uh if you click for the third time there is no sorting on the visual itself right so now there's no sorting on the visual and as a result the default um, the so-called custom sort or the default sort that you have in your model is used for sorting. All right. And um, up until previous week, right, there was only one sort possible, which is the, the, the sort that you actually endorse as a custom sort in the Power BI model, right? If you don't have that, now here you will find under this menu, menu under the ellipsis, you go down, and now here you see, you will find the the like all the fields that you have added to the visual, right? Sort by channel, for example, and here you switch from descending to ascending. So if you for some reason need to sort, uh, you know, uh, change the switch the sort to alphabetical. That's how you do it, all right? I don't recommend to do that. This works in phone books, but not in, in reporting. But sometimes you do need to do this, right? Uh, if you have like accounts and, and you number your accounts and you want to have strictly one order or something, you can just set it up, uh, put the numbers in the labels and then sort like this. So this is possible uh, with the latest version, with version point one, uh, sorry, 2.1.3. Which was released last week, and this was this, this week's version is 2.1.4, which you can actually already download now. And yeah, you'll have it. Just upload, just update your visuals. This will work. Uh, great. All right. Ah, happy, happy users. Thank you. <laughs> great to see this. Um, okay. Any other questions? Uh, last call for the questions. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the support and. See you maybe tomorrow at the Excel webinar. All right, check out our webinars um, uh, page on the zebrabi.com um, website. Otherwise, see you in two to three weeks with some DEX, DEX, uh, 
decks, examples, measures, quick measures, and other stuff. Ciao. Thank you. <laughs>